So welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be working on a 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee with the 4 liter inline 6 engine. Um, it had a whole bunch of codes. Some of them were pretty straightforward like an O2 sensor high voltage code. But today I want to show how I went about reading and verifying these codes. The P1391 is for an intermittent loss of cam or crank position signal. I wasn't sure which one, but I was pretty certain the misfire codes were all caused as a result. What was throwing me off was the fact that the car never had a problem starting, but it did misfire while accelerating. So I hooked up the oscilloscope to the cam and crank sensor. I wanted to verify that both sensors were getting the required voltage and I wanted to see the generated signal. On the wiring diagram, I found that the cam sensor signal is the tan wire with the yellow tracer and the crank signal was the gray wire with the black tracer. I back probed the sensors at the connector and used the battery as a ground for both. Back probing both sensors at the same time will allow me to see how both sensors work together. Here's a snapshot of what the signal should look like. The cam signal is regularly spaced as it rises and falls, the crank signal has consistent groupings for spikes for each cylinder. This was taken right after clearing the codes. After several minutes of idling, the signal started looking like this. You can see that the cam signal remains steady and the rising and falling edges are right between the crank signal. But the crank signal is not always there. Some of the groupings are missing. Based on these readings, I ordered a new crank position sensor. When I took the old one out, this is what it looked like. I'm guessing that the vibration from the engine running caused the sensor to jump in its hole, causing the signal to disappear randomly. After putting in a new sensor, the car ran smoothly with no issues or misfires. Let's take a look at how I replaced the sensor. So taking out the crank position sensor, is they say to do it from the engine side but i found an article on an online forum i'm going to put a link down in the description box below uh, the guy found a way to do it from inside the car underneath the dash so if we go under the steering wheel so behind the rug if you peel it back there are two metal covers there's one right here and one down here. First, we need to remove this upper panel and it just clips out. It just slides out, it's held on by clips. Once you get that out of the way, there's going to be a screw here that I already took out. Down here, there's going to be a screw down here. There's going to be screw, another screw over here. And a 10 millimeter bolt underneath on each side. Once that's out, it will very easily slide out. And then this is the tube, the vent tube that needs to be moved out of the way um if you can just pull it up here just kind of wiggle it back and forth and then once you bend it down you'll see that it's held on by a screw down here you can either undo it from beneath or what i did was just slice it with an, a very sharp knife and you can just pull it out and you get a little slit in there that way you can push it back in place and snap this top piece back into the box. Once that is out of the way, there are two, you can bend down the rug out of the way, the carpet. And there are two uh, covers up here and up here. You wanna get the, the one closer to the front. I already got it loose. Uh, it's just two 10 millimeter nuts. You get those out of the way. This cable is also in the way. 
and then you can move the metal cover just move the metal cover out of the way and you can pick the you can pick up the rubber with the line going through it just also slide that out of the way and then if you look through that hole towards the front you can see right there is the bolt for the sensor if you look you have to put your head closer to the center console and look towards the front and you see it right there i use this swivel socket to remove the bolt i tried getting at it with a straight socket but it wouldn't fit after loosening the bolt I pulled the sensor out from the top of the engine. I also put the new one back through the top. After tightening the bolt from inside, I installed all the interior panels in reverse of how they were taken out. So there you go, the simpler way of replacing the crank position sensor on a Jeep WJ. I hope this video is helpful. As always, thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please take a moment and do so. I would really appreciate it.